And welcome to Spine Chilling Cinema. I'm your host, Oliver, the Caretaker Collins, along with... Are you still the Queen of Shenanigans? Yes? My co-host, the Queen of Shenanigans, Alice, and her trusty as always, Cat Bubbles. Switching it up here. You got, like, ears on and... Oh, your ears are real. Okay, okay shenanigans. But anyways, we have a feature film for you tonight on Spy and Chilean Cinema. Alice says we always do. Sometimes we have shorts, they're not features, but whatever. Anyways, tonight's feature film is from 1932, Murder at Dawn. This one is directed by Richard Thorpe, and it's a mystery murder film. No, that's not a spoiler. Alice, the word murder is actually in the title of the film. Whatever, she says. Oh boy, here we go. You and your cat ears. Meow, she says. Oh boy. Well, with that, let us get to tonight's feature film on Spy and Chilling Cinema from 1932. Murder at... What now? Oh, she wants to know if it's about vampires dying in the morning because of the sun. I don't think so, Alice. From 1932, Murder at Dawn. You keep it to yourself, silly. Our honeymoon has never stopped. As concerned, darling, it's never started. Oh. Gee, I wish you could stay with us longer, Doris. So do I. I've had a marvelous visit, Gertrude. <laughs> Come in. Hello, everybody. Daddy! <laughs> I thought you'd never get here. I'd have been here earlier. I got caught in the rain. I took a taxi cab and a block away from here blew a tire. I had to walk all the way up here in the rain. <laughs> How dare you be gone a whole hour? <laughs> Danny, did you get the tickets? Yep, I've got them right here. Here we are. What time does the train leave? I forgot to ask. Oh, you would, Romeo. Never mind, I'll find out. I wish you'd call me Mr. Romeo. You better get your coat off. <laughs> Do you think your father will give us his consent? Well, if he doesn't, I'll marry you anyway. Dad's a darling, but since he started that invention, I've hardly seen him. He even rented that old place just to be alone. I wonder what he'll say when he sees all of us coming in like this. I don't know. He doesn't even answer my letters. But I sent him a telegram we were coming. 
And after all, this is the first time I've ever been married. That's one thing a father should be interested in. <laughs> well, the plane leaves at 6.30 and arrives at 10. That gives you two hours to get your dad's consent, get back to Montrose, get married, and catch the midnight flyer. Good. That gives us just enough time. By the way, uh, Mr. Romeo, did you get the ring? Did I? Isn't that oh, beautiful? Oh, that's lovely. My master's voice. <laughs> little cubes of water, little drops of gin. Make your footsteps falter and fill the world with sin. <laughs> Not good, but loud, you know. Look. Oh, pretty, pretty, pretty. Do it fit? You bet your life. Well, well, put that on. It's the worst luck in the world. No. Really? Yes. Well. Yes. All kinds of help and a world of luck. <laughs> and you'll need them both plenty. Another crack like that and so will you. You see, never a dull moment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now take it easy, boys and girls. Will you please stop clapping? That's all I've heard on the entire trip. Why didn't you pick a different station? Uh, There's not a soul around here. I'll find somebody then. Here. So put it down. I called in. Not very, but I hope it doesn't start raining. find anybody, dear? Oh, you wouldn't. You're looking for someone? Yes, General. We're looking for some sort of a conveyance. Yes, sir. I know, but there's nothing like that in this town. Oh, but there must be. No, I tell you, there ain't nothing like that here. They don't allow it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't understand, General. We're looking for a vehicle. Yes, you know? sir. I know what y'all wants, boss, but I tell you, they just don't stand for it. <laughs> uh, John. Uh, yes, sir, boss. Y y you see, what he wants is, uh, uh... You know what a horse and buggy is, don't you? Yes, sir. Uh, fine. Now, we'll rub out the horse. You see? Uh, what have we got now? I don't know. Uh, well, look, look, look. Now, putter, 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 putter. I ain't much good at this, boss. No, no, we want a car or a cab. We want to go someplace. Your lunch, which? A car. Look at you at my ignorance. And there's Henry sitting right over there. Well, that's great. Come on, let's get going. Yes, yeah, sir, I'll take your bag. Get hey, I. Excuse me. Y'all come right on here. Right, yeah. Hey, dummy. Get it, get it. Mm, all right, all right. There we are. Up right in. <laughs> hey, hey, wait a minute. 
Up in front there, Fidget. You're married. Come on. Oh, give me a break, will you? You got a break, darling, and you married me. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on, make it snap. Why, you old why? We all want to go to the crag. What's the matter? Don't you know where it is? Yes, boss. I know why it is, but I ain't going there, that's all. How much do you want? About two dollars? Nope. All right, four dollars. That plays him handy. <laughs> Make it six dollars. All right, then ten dollars. Boss, yours money so important. I take you there if I get you. That's the boy. There you are. Now make it snappy. Come on, Henry. We squire. Lock up? Yes. Who is there? Young I'm a C, Professor Farrington. Well, he's not in. Well, open this door. Well, no one is here. Sir, well, Professor Farrington? Glad to have found you, I'm sure. Professor. Why, Judge Folger, how do you do? Hi. Judge, my invention is finished. And success. Unlimited power direct from the sun. And it works equally well with artificial light. How soon will you be ready to make the announcement and demonstration? At once. Good. The VXO accumulator will produce unlimited power at a mere fraction of the present cost. Free power. Do you hear? Free power. Setting millions of wage slaves free. Here, Uncle. We'll be out in about 30 minutes. I ain't going to stay here. Hey! Hey, where are you going? Now what? Well, how are we going to get back? I don't know, but this place certainly seems to be very unpopular with the natives. Well, it's no picnic grounds to me, ain't it? I don't know why this gate is locked. Well, let's get in some place before it rains. We can go around this way. Is there a place around there? Come on. Oh. Not fine looking for 
Give me every hand. There we are. Just a minute. Just a minute there, Bridget. All right. Watch what you're doing. Oh, stop. Oh, oh, come on now. Remember. Oh, what a beautiful spot this turned out to be. As far as I'm going, I don't like it. That's right. Keep crabbing, keep crabbing. You're doing great. So you see, Professor, immediate announcement to the success of your invention is necessary. I suppose you're right. I thought you'd see it my way. And tonight I shall call a meeting. Take it out of my eyes. Put it out. It's lightning. <laughs> what is it? I don't know. Hey, stop. Hey. <laughs> I must hide him somewhere. Dad, what's the matter? Oh, never mind. You must get away. You mustn't be found here. Oh, oh no, no, no. Get away, please. Quick. You mustn't be found here. Go. Get me some water quickly. Fall in the field. I'll get the water. Stay here. Help me, please. Something terrible has happened. What happened to him? I don't know. Why, well, I left father there a minute ago. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. My father? I saw him just before dinner. What happened to him? I don't know. I don't know where he could have gone. That's the only door out of this room. Just a minute. I'll light a light. <laughs> Judge Folger. Is he dead? Yes, he's dead, all right. Yeah! <laughs> 
That window is nailed back there. Well, can you imagine that insect walking out on me? Oh! There's a man looking at us. Oh, I want to go home. Now, listen, don't get excited. I'll take care of you. Oh. 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 He's got bottom switch. We must find father. He may be ill. He may be even dying. Yeah, but what about my Freddy? Hmm. Where will I find Professor Farrington? Do you know who this man is? Why, it's Judge Folger. He's one of my fathers. Yes, I know who he is. But who killed him? Why, we found him just like that when we came in here. Hmm. He's been strangled. was here. There was no one here. The room was empty when we arrived. your father? Where are the servants? Well, I don't know. What's that? Now just... Who's coming? Has anyone seen the caretaker? No, we haven't. You are the housekeeper? Yes. Where is the caretaker? In bed. I just passed his door. When did you last see Professor Farrington? With this man, before those people arrived. Miss Farrington, did you see your father when you came? Yes, I did. He acted strangely and I thought he was ill. I went for help and... When I returned, he was gone. He didn't do it. I know he didn't. Something must have happened to him. We must find Farrington at once and notify the authorities. Where can I find a telephone, dear? There ain't no telephone.
What do you know about this affair? I know nothing. I heard a noise came down to investigate. He was in his bed when I passed his room. This man has been murdered. We must send for help. I'm on the road. I'll get the police. Very well. Get started. Bring the police and the coroner. Meantime, the rest of us had better try and find Professor Farrington. Can I go to my bed now? Yes. You young ladies had better find some place to wait. We'll find your father all right, Miss Farrington. You go along with the housekeeper, dear. We'll find him all right. Don't worry. Madam! Do you mind taking care of these two young ladies until I can find Mr. Farrington? Oh, that'll be all right. Thank you. Come along. Welcome back. And oh, we got all kinds of stuff going on in this film. We got a scientist that's trying to make free energy for everybody, but it looks like it's going to cost him. Yes, indeed. Maybe with his life. Oh. Then we got Freddy um, finds a secret door panel, falls through, and things are just bad for him. He's finding bodies everywhere, but he finds a barrel. And the barrel either has whiskey or some other booze in it, and he likes to drink. And he is quite funny. Alice thinks he's a stupid drunk. And caretaker, you'd like him because you get like that when you drink. Okay, a little bit. TMI, Alice, TMI. Holy moly, but... I don't know if this film has just got a lot going on, Alice. Can you handle it? Don't be silly. Okay, okay. Oh, but Alice's favorite character so far is the housekeeper, which is Martha Maddox. And Henry, you say, is super creepy. Well, he's the son of the housekeeper and I think the caretaker. Well, that explains a lot, she, Dallas says. Oh, boy. Oh, my. But that is... Misha Auer and he's been a villain in a lot of films a lot of films and him and Martha have been in the same movie Monster Walks from 1932 yes we had that on Spine Chilling Cinema and now you you know why he looks familiar okay Alice okay but we got a lot of crazy stuff going on and you don't like Henry because he's creepy. I like Freddy. You don't like Freddy. There's a lot of stuff going on. But we thank you for starting your weekend right with a fright or a mystery or a couple murders possibly. I mean, the, the judge is dead now. Oh, my goodness. But anyways, we need to get back to this film because Alice says I'm rambling and 
she might be right this time. She might be right this time. So without further ado, let us get back to the second half of our feature film from 1932, Murder at Dawn. Get out of here, Daddy. Yeah, listen, 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 I'm surprised you didn't see a couple of pink elephants. Come on, we'll see what it's all about. Don't make me go in there, Daddy. I don't want to go, Daddy. I already saw I don't want to go back there. What is it, Daddy? Right here. Oh, he had... Uh, Barrington was right there, Danny. I, I, I had my hand on his face. You're crazy, you know that? No, no, he was right there, Daddy. Maybe... Oh, look, maybe the mice got him. The mice? Yeah. Why, there's no mice around here. Oh, there's got to be mice, or, or in places haunted. You've got mice in that belfry of yours. Now, where'd you see the caretaker? In, in there. He's, he's hanging on a hook. Yes. Right, right in here, there's, 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 there's a hook over there. See, the door, right over in there, is where the hook... Ah! Oh, the Well, he was in there. Boy, that's powerful poison you're drinking. I know him in there, Danny. He was hanging on a hook. Hanging on a hook? Yeah. He was hanging on a hook and he yodeled at me. He wanted you? He, he yodeled at me, and I yodeled right back at him. I see. No, Daddy, no. Oh, I'm sure I heard Freddy's voice. It isn't your imagination. Positive. Oh, Freddie, my darling, what have they done to my baby? I mean, I mean, You've been drinking. No. All I had to do was one little nip in the other room. Where have you been? Yeah, I've been looking all over for you. Oh, yes, you have. I have. Oh. Danny boy? No. Is huh? any good? Huh? The water's deep down there. What's the matter? What happened here?
seem to have come this way. <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> He's throwing things at you. I am not. What are you doing? You want to... You want to... Doesn't look as though there's been anybody here for a month. Say, Danny, maybe he's behind that chair tower on the roof, huh? That's an idea. I'm sorry. Who does this belong to? Me? What are you doing with it? Experimenting? But you'll find out. Yes, it's exactly like yours. Quite complete. It lacks the most important element, the formula. I'll get it. You'll never get it from me. Oh. Well, in that case, at dawn, when the sunlight will come through the window and will hit that little accumulator of yours, you will be electrocuted by your own invention. <laughs> well, are you willing to share it with me? Huh? No, I'll never tell. Oh, well, yes, you will. There's a way of making you tell. <laughs> There's a key in the door. That window hasn't been open for years. Ready. You stand guard right here. I'm going to find that secret panel in the laboratory. It's the last thing I do. Now, you girls, stay right here and don't worry. Please, Danny, don't go. Let's all stay here together and wait till morning. Now, that's all right, dear. You stay here and don't worry, please. Freddy will take care of you. Freddy, lock that door. Hey, listen, girls, I think I'd better go out and see if Danny needs any help. Oh, go ahead. I'm going to sleep. All right, all right. Now, look, after I go out, you lock the door and don't let anybody in the door unless you hear my voice or Danny's voice. Now, you, you, you lock the door, huh? All right. All right. Danny's voice or my voice now? All right.
that room. I found a secret passage in the other room. I was trying to find the secret of that panel when you jumped on me. Now we've lost it again. It's closed. You'll never get in there until you can locate the catch. Do you think you could find your way around to the other room? Yes, I think so. All right, come on. was. If you want to save his life, come alone. Come alone. Sure, this room is right next to the professor's workshop. Well, I'll light another match. way of making you talk. That's what you meant. That and more. Doris. Doris, did the boys get back in? Doris. Everything will be all right. Do you realize what you're doing? When the sunlight hits that accumulator, it will release electricity enough to kill us both. Right. And nothing will prevent it. 
un, uh, unless you write out the formula. All you have to do is to move your fingers just a little bit. No. We came right into this room. And uh, the match I had went out. I turned to light another match. And when I lit the match and turned around, he was gone. Gee, he disappeared. Oh, say, I've been in here. And I came in through there. What? Yes. Yeah. Freddy, are you sure that this is a room? Positive, positive, I tell you. Well, there must be a catch in here somewhere. Maybe there's a trigger, huh? So oh, imagine, this, so. Open right up like that and boom, in I came. The whole fireplace? No. Came on? Yeah, and I remember that over there, too. So you haven't been drinking again, have you? Me drink? Oh, Danny. It's only a few minutes before daylight. Don't you think you should... Uh... Right, sir? Can't be serious about going through with this. I am. You're mad. Huh? Oh, it's immaterial. And if you're not mad, you're going to write this formula. Surely your daughter is well worth saving, isn't she? Watch that window. In a few moments, the first shaft of the rising sun will strike the accumulator. No one knows better than you do what the result will be. You will write out the formula or die. <laughs> You know what to do. I'll be right back.
Doris. Somebody come quickly. Fainted, I think. Who tied you up like this? Oh, that crazy caretaker. He thought he could get the secret of my invention from me. I... Oh. Hey, what happened to you? Somebody jumped me in the dark. I don't know who it was. This is an awful spot. You know, Par <laughs> you know Farrington? Yes. Somebody laid him out. And that, that the caretaker, you know? Hey. The guy with the cape? Right. He's been hanging on hooks around here. Doris. We only have a little water here. Doris. This is all right. Doris. That's all right now, dear. Don't worry. You're up in the tower room. How do we get here? Well, that caretaker brought you here. He was trying to force me to give him my formula. He must be insane. Oh, let's get out of here. All right, dear. Can you stand? Is he dead? Yes. But isn't this the man we saw thrown in the water? I don't know anything about that. But he's my boy. Oh, my boy. Now, there's another body over there. Oh. Oh. Who, who, who's that over there? It's the caretaker. The caretaker. Who? Ah! What's that? It's what you saw thrown in the pool. It's nothing but an old dummy made to look like the caretaker. Oh. Mr. Farrington? This caretaker was in the employ of this man right here, and he was to prevent you from completing your invention at any cost. And if possible, to steal it from Why, him. he's crazy. Who are you, anyway? I was employed by Judge Folger to take charge of this case, and you are directly responsible for his death. You can't get away with this. You're under arrest right now, and you're coming with me. What is it that brought you young people up here? Father, we're going to be married. Well, uh, that is, if you'll give us your consent. I want you to come with us on our honeymoon. You need the rest. My honeymoon was over years ago. Young people should be alone at such times. Why not spend your honeymoon here, and I will go back to the city? Well, if you don't mind, Mr. Farrington, we'll go back to the city with you. And that's the conclusion of tonight's feature film from 1932, Murder at Dawn. Yes, Alice, you were right. Alice, halfway through the film, was telling me, I bet you any money it's, it's the crazy care caretaker, Henry, because you can't trust a caretaker, she says. Well, thanks a lot, Alice. Well, maybe you sometimes, she says. Okay. 
But yes, Henry fell to his doom, even though it wasn't the farthest fall, but I would imagine that would probably still could either hurt somebody or kill them, as in this film. And of course, Martha is very, very sad about her, her son, you know, so that's kind of bad. But in the end, a happy ending for the most part. Review and ranking time, Alice. What do you say? You liked Martha the best. The other females were kind of weak in their acting. And none of the guys were really attractive enough for you. Oh boy, that has a big thing with Alice in her ranking of the films. Just letting everybody know. So what do you give it, Alice? A 4.5 shovels out of 10. So less than average. Okay, Alice. And, and it's a film that you've kind of seen before with the, the old dark house and the mystery thing. That's true, that's true. That's, I was going to say something like that too, but you beat me to it. So um, For me, um, it's an older film, so I give it a little slack on the editing, but holy moly, there was some pretty bad editing, editing going on. Yes, indeed. Alice says, almost as bad as this show. Oh, boy. Anyways. Oh, oh boy. But I liked uh, Martha Maddox in this film as well. Um, I didn't think the females were that bad of actresses. I think they held their own. Um, and Freddy was funny. I liked the comedy. Could have used even a little bit more comedy. A little bit more comedy probably would have maybe helped the film along. So I kind of feel like the film didn't know what it wanted to be. A mystery or a comedy. Maybe a little bit more comedy. Yes, rambling. I know, Alice. And the other thing that was a little weird is when Henry met with Doris and said... You have to come with me if you ever want to see your father alive again. So she went, and she, they were, she was following him, and then all of a sudden, the next scene, it showed Doris in his arms, and he was carrying her up to, like, the tower. And they did, I, I didn't understand, they should have shown something, but then they did say that she fainted. So, did she really, though, or did he hit her and knock her out, or drug her? Who knows? We're going with fainting because that's what they said. So, but my review, now my ranking, I'm going to give this a five out of ten shovels. And no, not to beat you and go one a half higher. I just don't think it's horrible, but not great. Um, if you watch this movie, I don't feel like you. You feel like you just wasted an hour of your life away. Alice says she feels like that every time we have a spine-chilling cinema show. Oh, wow, Alice. Oh, just kidding. Oh, boy. Now she's going to be doing this just kidding thing. It's like her new phrase. But we have come to the end of the show, and thankfully, Alice has picked a cartoon just in case if you didn't like this film. It scared you, which may be because of Henry, um, the caretaker. Caretakers can be scary. And with Alice picking a cartoon, it's been a while since she's picked a cartoon. But anyways, I'm rambling. I know Alice. I know. I know I gotta stop that. I know Alice. Bubble says so too. Oh boy, here we go. But anyways, thank you for watching Spine Chilling Cinema. And as always, until next time, from all of us. We cannot wait to see you again.
faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound, this amazing stranger from the planet Krypton, the man of steel, Superman. Possessing remarkable physical strength, Superman fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Disguised as a mild-mannered newspaper reporter, Clark Kent. What do you think of the professor's show now? I still think it's pretty dangerous business. Hope nothing goes wrong. gentlemen, that the safety of the public is of special import to you. Perhaps almost as important to you as my ambitions are to me. But you request that I give up my experiments, experiments which are the combination of 30 years of dreaming and planning is impossible. Tonight, those dreams will become real. The comet of Falcon will be my toy. Under my control, it will be brought to within a mile of us. Then, after a close examination, I send it back again into space. Your tampering with nature endangers thousands of lives. Yes, and even at the possible cost of those lives, I shall continue my experiment. I warn you, Professor, we're prepared to stop you. And I warn you, sir, any interference may prove disastrous. Stop! <laughs> City editor. Look, Chief, the panic's on. The thing's gone haywire. <coughs> Lois, Lois, what happened? Lois.
Miss Lane, the control. Superman, you were wonderful. <laughs> You're pretty wonderful yourself. Oh, how did you get here? <laughs> Thanks to Superman. Thank you.